victorious. Welcome once again to Prime Morning. My name is Asiya Dua Akumiano. It's time for Let's Talk Relationship. Now today's topic for discussion, we are discussing managing demanding careers with right parenting. Right parenting. And so viewers, I urge you to kindly get interactive with us on all our social media platforms. If you have an experience of being a very, somebody who is in a career where it's highly demanding and you're a parent as well, Please share your experience with us. How are you managing to be a parent and, you know, being dedicated to your work life at the same time? I would love to read all that. And if you have any questions too, my season guests are seated and ready, geared up to answer it all for you. And so let me get started. I have seated with me this morning, Reverend Dr. Nanaya Prempe. She's a relationship coach and CEO, Tenaifa Group. And then I have Reverend Jerry Owusu Ajana. Four Square Gospel Church in Dansoman. And then Pastor and Lady Makan from Emmanuel International Christian Center. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Blessed beyond curse. Mm, amen. Doing very amen. well. Amen. Amen to that. Very well. Pastor Khan, Makan? Fantastic. Fantastic. Happy to be here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lady Makan. I'm well by God's grace. Thank you. Pastor Jerry. Powerful. Powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today you decided to, <laughs> I don't know how you uh, foresaw that. They're matching. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we are matching. And you have sandwiched uh, us. Yes. <laughs> and it looks like your colors also blend in. Yeah. Yes, yeah. very true. Yeah. Yes, yes. See, yes. today is prophetic. We are in the spirit. Yeah, in the spirit. Ah. Yeah, in the spirit. As so viewers, get interactive with us on all our social media platforms. I want us to start with the definition or um, identify what right parenting is that will come into your personal lives, what exactly you do. And all that. So, okay. <laughs> I see there. you're looking beautiful. Thank you. So yes. are you. All right. Thank you for having me. Good morning to everyone uh, watching Joy Prime from across the world. Um, is there anything like right, right parenting? parenting. <laughs> you know, can you even get it right? Okay. So, um, I believe that uh, parenting is like custodial custodialship mm. when you are. Uh, or stewardship. Okay. When you are asked to nurture or keep an eye or watch over something, somebody, uh, until the right owner comes. Okay. And in this case, the right owner is God. Children coming through us that we call ourselves parents they don't belong to us. Mm -hmm. They are for God. Mm. So God is giving you a gift. For as long as you are alive and you are able to, and he allows you to keep that child. That is how good that gift is. It is not a gift that lasts forever. Right. It is a gift that has an expiring date. Mm. So either you expire before the gift or the gift expires before you. So for me, my definition of parenting is when uh, God has assigned a child. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own child. Yeah. God assigns a child to your care. Mm -hmm. So you have a duty of care to that child until God says it is time for you to come home mm -hmm. or the child to come home. Mm. And so when that happens, parenting can be handed over to another person. Do you understand? Like if you're no longer around, somebody else takes over the parenting. And as you do, one, one interesting thing is now, this day and age, social media has become a parent. Oh, yes. Yeah, very true. Okay. Our educators are parents because you nurture your child to an extent and the child goes to boarding school or to high school, I mean, to some form of educational institution. The teachers take over. And whatever you have done can be undone. And okay. even when the teachers take over, the peers, mm -hmm. the, the mates, the friends of that child can also influence that child and bring in some kind of parenting unconsciously. So it can undo the good that you have done in that child for as long as the child remains in the company of those people. people okay. They also have a way of parenting the child without your approval. Very true. Yeah. yeah. Yes, very true. Pastor Makan, um, okay, so 
how many children do you have, first off? We have six children. You have six children? Yes. Boys. Six boys. Thank you strong for that. boys. Ah. I was going to say. Lively boys. Six boys. Six. And the eldest is 15. And the youngest is two. How did you do that? <laughs> we, did it, we did it in the way that. <laughs> 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 God has given to a man. Wow. Wow. That? wow. That that's it. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, amazingly, when we came together, I had a vision that we had six kids. Oh. Yeah, wow. so, so I didn't see six boys, but I saw we had six, six, kids. six, six kids. Yeah, okay. so. But everyone would say, is the next one going to be a girl? And always would you prophesy over us that the next one <laughs> is a girl. It's a girl. Going, going Even today. <laughs> Bravo. So, uh, viewers, um, I just, I just want to put this across. I don't know if it, uh, some of you have come across this very interesting video on social media. I need to let viewers know. I need yeah. to remind them. There's a very interesting video that was circulating on social media where a couple, uh, uh, the pastor, the man was, you know, um, saying nice words to his wife, was just telling, him how, uh, telling her how appreciative he's been over the years of they being together. So it's actually Pastor McCann and Lady McCann yeah. who were... Uh, Viral. They went viral during that period. Mm. And it was so amazing. There was, dance, Ghanians, there was a dance going on. Yes, there was a yeah. dance going on. They were in church. <laughs> they were in church. They were in church. Yeah, it was in the you, church you that you did that. Send me the link so I yeah. can watch. I, I will find it. Uh, in fact, we have to find that video and then show <laughs> viewers in case some of you have not watched it. It was just beautiful. That was our yeah. 16 uh, years wedding yeah. anniversary. 16 years wedding yeah. anniversary. Wow. And it's, uh, it's been difficult. Mm. It's not always been easy, but mm -hmm. we have to enjoy the victories. Yeah. yeah, we have to celebrate. And we always encourage everyone to celebrate every year of anniversary. Right. Like you celebrate your birthday mm -hmm. because it, it's a victory it's a and victory. it's not easy. So, right. Yeah. right. Okay, so before the both of you got married, what yeah. were you doing? I was in university okay. and I'd just gone into work in an office job and my wife was... I was um, doing a one-year access course to university. So I did my AS levels and I wanted to be a social worker. Mm. And so I was doing my one year access to social work yeah, at, in Milton Keynes at the time. And yeah, that's what we're doing before we met. Okay. And, and that was 16 years ago. Yeah. And my wife um, advised us to move to Ghana. Right. And when we moved to Ghana, we came to a place called Malam. Yeah, Malam. It was a very floody area at the time. Uh, we didn't have much. I had one suitcase. I think Joella had, had one, one suitcase, one suitcase yeah. Yeah, at the time. So we came with, with nothing and we had a very simple beginning yeah. in, in Ghana. When I say a simple beginning, like you go and buy some yam at the roadside mm -hmm. and come back. That's how we started in, mm -hmm. in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And um, Joella became pregnant with our son Micah. That's our firstborn son. Okay. So to start off with parenting, you have to remember there was two of you before you had children. Yeah. And there were certain things that you would do together that was the building block of your marriage and your relationship. When children enter into the marriage, the dynamics of everything changes. But there were things that you used to do for one another and there was time you used to spend with each other mm -hmm. that brought the best out of each other. Mm -hmm. I would say kindness. When we're courting for marriage, we, we, we put out our best. Okay. And when children come into the home, there's extra pressure, financial, mental, emotional, there's strains, and you've never been a parent before. You can think how it is to be a parent, but it's a whole new world. Yeah. So it's trying to balance the home and making sure that the two of you are still being kind to one another mm. and giving each other your best, because it's easy to go into a professional setting and the workplace, and you give your best there with everything yeah. you do. Yeah. And then when you go home, if you're not careful, mm -hmm. yeah. your partner doesn't get your best. So it's, it's very important to be intentional about the kindness that you show to your partner. And it's, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy, especially when the, ch the children come into the home. In. Yeah, there's like a lot to learn. <laughs> like six of them, you, you realize that you can't be so important how you used to be. Yeah. You lose your importance as in how you spend your time, yeah. Yeah. What, what you do with your money. I mean, when I, when I get my money, I really chop, 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 chop. You divide it by six. <laughs> and you realize that... Seven, seven, seven. actually, because... Seven. Eight. Yeah, sorry. Eight. Eight. You included. Eight. Eight. You included. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. You did divide it by eight, yes. So it, it, you, even when you think you've saved up quite a substantial amount of money, you realize that there's a sacrifice you yeah. have to pay. Yeah. But it, it's worth it. It's so worth keeping it. your team running, keeping your home running, means that remember that you were two mm -hmm. before you became six mm -hmm. or eight or mm -hmm. you became three. Mm -hmm. And just making sure that 
you are intentionally kind to one another. Okay. <laughs> Look at the way they are looking at each other. Hey, and then they are very euro. Very So uh, we'll definitely come to the challenges that you had to face, exactly what you had to do, certain things that you had to sacrifice um, down along the line. Mr. Jerry. Um, like um, Dr. Nanaya said, parenting basically is stewardship. It's a trust that God bequeaths to you. And he says, I, I trust you with a life. Um, it, and, and the most precious thing in this world is a life. Yeah. And so when God bequeaths that trust in you, um, it's required that you are able to, to step up and do whatever it takes to help raise that child into fulfilling what God intended for that child to come and do in the world. And so parenting is, is quite a challenging task. It's a kind of, yeah. you're replacing God in a way, like you become, um, you know, the way scripture says, obey God in that same way in Ephesians 6. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. And so it's, it's a kind of a place of authority and privilege and responsibility also. And so, um, like Dr. Nanaya said, I wonder if there's anything called right parenting. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we might get into those discussions. Yeah, later. because right now what I'm, think, what I'm thinking of is, okay, so at what point would you say somebody's a bad parent or somebody's a good parent? What qualifies someone as being bad parents or a good parent? Um, it can clearly, it clearly be identified when for example, I walk into a restaurant and I see a mother who is almost naked and a child who is copying the mother. That is bad parenting. Oh. Do you understand? Okay. Like you, you come into a church, you expect to see a decently dressed female right. in the church. Right. In the church. Mm. Not in a club. In the church. And then, so when you see a mother or the, uh, the, the parent who is exposing almost everything God has blessed her with. And she has a teenage daughter following suit and even more explicit. That is bad parenting. When the parent sends a son to go and buy cigarettes, go and buy beer, you are bad parenting because you are teaching the child this is good. This is how I want to okay, live. Yeah. I want you to live your life. Yeah. The Bible says, "Bring up a child." The in the, yeah, the way it should grow. Mm -hmm. Jesus grew in, in 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 stature, so you have to build up a child to the fullness of the stature of Christ, mm. which we try to do every day by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect parents, right. you know. Right. I have four: two girls, two boys, actually. Okay. Okay. I have a five, I will say five. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see children growing and asking questions in Africa, you shut them up. Yeah. You silence them. Yes. But in America, you cannot do that. Because if you don't show that child, she or he is going to find a way to get those answers. And uh, they may get answers from sources that you don't want. Yeah. So you have to teach your children what they need to know, because guess what? They are more curious than you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take that opportunity to teach them while they grow, they'll start searching. They'll call the neighbor. They'll call their best friend. They'll call somebody. They'll go onto social media now. Before, when we were growing up, there was nothing like social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, even for you to make a phone call, you have to, to live in walk, a... Walk uh, a little while to, before... Yes. Yeah. Go to the phone booth. <laughs> yes. Unless the, the privileged ones who had more, uh, uh, phones Telephone. in their homes. Yeah. You know, the landlines in their homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like now that they have the entire world at the tip of their fingers. Mm. Uh, it's scary, I said you are. It's very scary. Yes. So right now, I'm looking at before... The, there are some parents who, before they end up um, having children had very demanding careers. Mm -hmm. Were very busy here and there before they got married and then they started having babies. So I want us to look at that and then there's another scenario of where the, the children were there, the family was already established and down along the line, they get a job that is highly demanding and so how do you... So let's start off with, before you... 
had children, you had a very busy career. Let's come to that. What are some of them? Because there are a whole lot of them out there. What are some of the things that you have to put into consideration even before you start making babies? Pastor Khan, you want to take that? Okay. I would say that if there's two of you, mm -hmm. and we hope there was two of you, and one of you has an extremely demanding career. Mm. You both of you. Yes. Both of us. Uh, yes. <laughs> both. If, if, if it's the both of you, mm. you've got to remember that influence. Someone is going to influence your child, if it's the housemaid, if it's the driver taking them to school, mm. if it's the environment in the school or after school. Mm. So there's a way you have to work together to minimize wrong influence. Okay. Because children are moldable and they have their formative years. And a lot of the time they pick up things from outside and bring it in. Yeah. And those things they bring in, sometimes they value it more than what you are trying to put into them. So between the two of you, in your demanding schedule, you, you make time for meetings at work. You make time for break at work. You make time to do the extra in the workplace. You must also do that at home because sometimes we're coming home so late our children are asleep. Yeah. If they're asleep when you get home, you've got to find a way to see them in the morning. Because when children come home from school, a mother would know, a father would know that just by looking at them if they had a good day or didn't have a good yeah. day. So if you're missing that in the evening, you've got to catch up with it in the morning. If you have to wake them up early, you have to have conversation, it's so important. So checks and tabs, you have to find a way to, to check on your child personally because someone can never know your child like you know your child. And having that open door of communication will let them feel when something goes wrong, they can come to you. They can to come you. to you. If yeah. they feel that you're never there or they keep missing those opportunities, yeah. they will get their answers from their friends. They will get it from their surrounds. They'll get it from the community, even their next door neighbor. You don't know who their neighbor is. You don't know the rules in that house. You don't know the influence in that. You don't know the things that they watch TV. Mm. Young children kiss in school. It happens. Yes. I mean, it's on social media. Yeah. Sometimes they've been caught behind certain uh, places, yeah. buildings, yeah. Yeah. kissing. Yeah. Yeah. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. If you find out, it's usually because what they were watching on the screen. True. So you may be doing all your effort to make sure your children don't see certain things, but maybe the house next door, they are seeing it. Yeah. So finding a way to work between the two of you to communicate with your children, mm -hmm. have that door opening and that they feel safe to tell you anything. Mm. So sometimes I have to tell my children things that happened to me. When you were young. And things that I fell into or people uh, exposed me to that I shouldn't have been exposed okay. to because I've got teenagers now. So I had to let them know someone exposed me to pornography. Mm. I didn't ask for it. I went to a friend's house and it was just given to me. My parents never had a talk to me about that. So that was something that I knew when I become a parent, I will make my effort to let them know certain things can happen. Right. This is what to do if it happens. Come to me, mm. explain yourself what has gone wrong. Mm. And then I can counsel the child because as parents, we're counselors, we're advisors and we're listeners as well. Mm. So between the two of you, one of you is a better listener. Yeah. One of you is a better talker. I know what my wife is, <laughs> <laughs> her strengths, and I know my, my weaknesses. Mm. So between the two of us, she's, a, she's an excellent listener. Mm. So when they get in trouble, because I'm usually the one that will tell them off, as soon as they've done something wrong, they'll rather go yeah, to, like to speak to mum. Yeah. Yeah. Lady McCann, how have you managed right from the beginning? Okay, so earlier, uh, Pastor McCann said that um, even from the beginning, mm. There was nothing. Both of you coming into Ghana with just one few cases each, and then you, yeah, you met, and then you got married, and then later you had a child. Yeah. So now, what exactly did you have to do after you had that child? Because definitely you had something else doing when it comes to work. Yeah. So how were you managing that? Well, honestly speaking, my first job in this country was to be like a caretaker to other children who their parents had left them in Ghana. They wanted them to have an exposure to the culture. Mm. Maybe they were on the verge of losing their children, okay. you know, because of the leniency when it comes to discipline, et cetera, in the UK. Mm. So my first job coming to Ghana was to take care of these children. And we got married very young. So I was 19 and he was 22. Okay. Yes, okay. Mm. Okay. When, when we got married. And I had my first at 20. So I remember that at the peak of my job, I was pregnant, taking care of 13 children. And I would say that 
Yeah. <laughs> you were taking care of 13 children that weren't yours. No, they were not mine. No, but they were, were from different families, yes. So it was my first yeah. experience yeah. being pregnant. It was my first... Um, I mean, I've always loved children. Okay. So, you know, I, that's, that's why I was even encouraged to such, you know, a job opportunity. Um, and so it was challenging in the sense that I had this particular mindset of these children will always go back to their parents. Okay. Or their parents would come to Ghana to visit and then I, we'd have a break mm -hmm. as the house would empty as, you know, um, uh, holidays for Easter, long vac, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. You know, but now having my own child, mm -hmm who was a quite a difficult baby and, you know, he, you know he, he, he wouldn't follow a sleeping pattern. He slept when he wanted, he ate what he wanted. He, was, he wasn't even a sad baby, he was happy. Just on his own terms and conditions. It depends on the time you conceived him. Uh, really? Well, we wouldn't know because as young people and, and newlyweds, that you were everywhere. <laughs> you were everywhere. Yes, yes. All over. <laughs> All over. So, you know, that, that, I, I really can't put uh, a, a, a thing to it, but yeah. it was very challenging. Okay. Because he would not sleep at night. And then these children, you had wow. to get them ready for school in the morning, etc. And so by my second child, I realized I, I can't cope. So we had to have that conversation. Okay. And even though it was, you know, a good income, it was a steady income, et cetera, we just had to have that communication that I'm not coping, managing my two plus these others. Others, yeah. You know, I realized, we realized it wasn't fair okay. on the children because my mindset had just totally changed. I wanted to put my time, my energy, everything into my, my own. So I think sometimes the particular career you are working at mm -hmm. or the job you are doing mm -hmm. will also influence the time and the influence you can have on your own children. children. Yeah. Would, so, you, would you also say that the number of children that you'd also have affects whether you're going to be a bad parent or a good parent? I think if you're a bad parent, irrespective of the number of children... I, I, I have, believe so. And you'll be a bad parent. Yeah, mm. and I, I believe that the foundations with which you lay having your children okay. is what you will follow e eventually as you are having your kids. I don't think that a lot has changed between us and the principles that we have that we are using to raise our children. So it's the same. And even when they have conversations and stuff, you can hear them repeating, dad will not approve of this, mom will not approve of this. Mm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. they don't. So you see that the certain principles you are laying, they are picking up yeah. and it, they are retaining that information, mm -hmm. but in terms of bad parenting, I, I, I believe that the number one thing that people have to understand is our actions for children will always speak louder yeah. than okay. the words mm -hmm. that we are, show, we are telling them. Okay. And I always tell parents today okay. who come to me with their children and all, oh, he's not doing this, she's not doing that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, reduce the amount of telling them what to do and be that example if you can. Just act it out. As best as you can. Okay. In the right. times that you are interacting with the child, mm. let them see that you are acting out what, they, what you want them to emulate. Mm. So perhaps because of your job or you know, your career, you see them on the weekends. In the time that you are spending with your child on the weekend, sit together at the dinner table with them. Put phones away, ask questions pass meals, plates, etc., about the, the table, you know. In our family setting, I always make sure my husband sits and the children sit. And I have our last by the dining table in his high chair as I feed him. At least there's that closeness. So that's an example. And as best as we can, the TV is not on. There are no phones. I mean, he has to keep okay. his phone as, because of, you know, the, co yeah, the calls, etc. Okay. But we keep it interactive, yeah. talking, etc. And you, we get to hear the children's conversation. And that's where we are able, between ourselves, to paint a certain picture to our children. Okay. And that was one of, one of the foundations was, please, thank you, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, mm. can you please, mm. may I? we have that conversation between ourselves. And be respectful to everyone, because at times we've had house helps, not all the time, at times. And we always tell them, you have to be as respectful as you are to us, to everyone else. Yeah. It doesn't okay. matter who they are. Right. You greet them, you respect them. No bad attitude, don't roll your eyes. As polite as you would be to your grandmother, it's the same way you must be to everyone else. So there's a lot of instilling that you have 
to do. Okay. And to be a bad parent, it's knowledge. The Bible says, my people pe perish because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. Yes. Not many people want to go out of their way to be a bad parent. Mm. It's not something we set out to do. But a lot of us don't have all the knowledge that we need. So if you can be in a place where you know you need knowledge, I think every parent is in that place where you need knowledge, but you have to make time for it. You have to know you don't know everything. And you have to want to improve on what you were given. To me, it's like parenting is like a plate. Your parents passed you a plate. They put as much as they could on that plate. Now is your chance to put what you can and improve that plate. Or and you're take also, some away. Or take oh, some yeah. away, yeah. yes, yeah. plus or minus. And you're now going to pass that plate to your children. And they're also, my children are going to improve on my parenting. True. And I always tell them, I've never been a parent to a 15-year-old before. Mm. It's my first time. I'm learning. So if you always have that mindset that I need knowledge for my child, I need mm. to improve. If I can improve myself, I can improve my children. Okay. All right. Pastor Jerry. Um, a, a thin line in all that you have said, mm -hmm. basically, as is, is for me a definition um, someone gave to me, uh, someone, a preacher, and that scripture in Proverbs, train up a child the way he should go. Mm -hmm. And when he grows, he will, not depart. he will not depart. The truth of yeah. the matter is you can't control growing, but you can control going. Mm. You have no power in, in, in the fact that they would grow, mm -hmm. but you, all, all the power you have is, is in the fact where they can go mm -hmm. and what they end up becoming. And, and the person used the word train and he said it's taken from what we know of a train oh. you know and, and that's the head of the train mm -hmm. where the mm -hmm. engine is mm -hmm. and then the carriage i mean the, the boxes yeah. that are behind yeah. them yeah. and and that the, what, what he said was that that was my 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 general vassia reverend dr francis saying um, he taught me and he said the train is not the long thing the train is only the head the train is just where the engine is. And all the other boxes behind it, and it doesn't matter how many they are or where they would get to, what is important is that the head chooses the direction that everything Every else true. would go. True. So if you go the right way, all your kids will go the right way. Mm. If you go the wrong way by your decisions, by your choices, by the things you ought to do. And if you always remember that, I, I tell my church members, I tell them, you're not raising your child alone. You are raising somebody's wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are raising somebody's husband. True. You are raising somebody's uh, managing director. Very true. Or possibly even raising president. somebody's president. Yeah. Or raising somebody's um, pastor. And what kind of a president would you want your country to have? Mm. If he ends up becoming that president, you have that opportunity and responsibility to determine how he will go. As for the grow, he will grow. Mm. But what he ends up becoming is largely dependent on what you do and how you communicate to your child and the things you train him to, to know the time you spend with him, you must know that you have the biggest, biggest, biggest opportunity to raise a human being who could become anything in this world. And it's a high responsibility. It's a high... It's a high responsibility. Mm. It's a very high... And to think of, you have a busy career. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a busy career, that company can close down tomorrow. Yeah. If you are the CEO, you could decide tomorrow and say, I'm no more than CEO. But you can't decide tomorrow and say, I'm no more the daddy of my son. Mm. You could decide, I'm leaving this job and I'm going to another job. But you can't decide that, look, I, I'm not interested in raising this son. I'm going to pick another boy to raise him. No, you don't have that privilege. You don't have that right of choice. So the one that is allotted to you, and for me, um, Anthony and I said, is like for a time period. You have a certain time period. And, 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 and the challenging thing is that you don't even know how long you will live. Yeah. And you don't even know how long your child will live. Yeah. And you just have time as, as, as the best gift that you have. So whatever career you are in, 
you, my, my family is in the UK. Okay. My, my wife and kids are in the UK. Mm. Um, and I pastor a church. Um, I have also several responsibilities at the national office. But I tell my church people that all of you can decide not to be my church members anymore. Very true. You can just get up. Even without telling me I'm leaving the church. Yeah. They just come in and walk out any day and any time they want. Mm -hmm. But my wife and my kids, they are going to be with me forever. Amen. So yeah. I have to make time for them. Mm. And so I have to make time travel, no matter how expensive it is. Mm. You leave church, you leave all the church members, you leave everything. And I go spend time with them, three months in a stretch, sometimes more. You just have to be there for them because you are creating memories. Mm. You, you have to be deliberate about the memories, about the principles, yeah. about the things you are communicating yeah. through them. And just always remember that you, the parent, you are that engine of the train, yes, yeah. the head. Wherever you are going, by proxy, by default, your kids are going to follow. Oh. Mm. I, love, I love that. Just yeah. say, say hi to Pastor Say for me. I will. <laughs> I love that. And uh, <laughs> just when... Um, lady was speaking yeah she brought me memories of my late father may he so rest in peace mm -hmm. i remember vividly that my mother was not a corporate person she was a, a daycare teacher and then she became a trader mm -hmm. when we were growing up most of our mothers were selling cloth utc yeah. Yeah. uac mm -hmm. those kind of uh, you know tamam moreno you know yeah. <laughs> so she she quit at a point to bring us up because mm -hmm. my brothers became a bit tough, so she had to. Mm -hmm. And I remember my dad set us time to eat, time to do homework, to study, time to watch TV, time to turn off the lights and sleep. And I, he was an army officer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he was a soldier. Obey before okay. complain. Okay. Obey before complain. Yeah. Yeah. But. I also remember that every Friday night, he would take us to uh, Kumasi Club, uh, where we go and have chichinga, <laughs> and then have Fanta, <laughs> and then he would buy ice Ella. cream for us. Ice cream. And chocolate. So my main problem is my teeth, because <laughs> my dad gave me chocolate very early. He won't play with you when it's time for news. Everyone has to sit down and watch the news, mm. GTV news. Those days, it was GBC. Yeah. GBC, yeah. 7 o'clock or 7.30, you have TV, news. And you have to read the newspaper hmm, to know at least the headlines. And he was teaching us, not all my siblings took after that, but I took after that. Okay. And I know that we will sit on the dining table. He, he has a seat for himself, yeah. the head, the high table, <laughs> the, the chair. Yeah. That's my dad's seat. Nobody sits there. My mom sits here. My all brother, that. everybody has a all seat. That. Mm. All that. And then, you know, ain't he, I know the table manners he taught us. Mm -hmm. He took time. And now that we are grown, mm -hmm. we also have to pass it on right. to our children. Mm. But now we have these children, they want to sit in front of TV yes. and, and have phones in their hands. Mm -hmm. The cook is on the couch, mm. the potato chips is here, and they are watching TV and playing video games and eating this organization. Yeah. Mm. So the values, the family values that Lady Pastor was talking about, we are losing it. Yes. Right. We are losing it. You know, and I think it's not too late for any parent. I was going to say, what could be the cause? Because social media be doing be a, a lot of harm. Yes. No, I In think this. we have been too flexible with our children because you cannot allow a 13-year-old child to tell you this is what I want and that is what I have to get. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's oh. true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can... I think in that, sorry to cut you, in that sense, that's where I think in our house we're trying to maintain good balance. Because I come from a very traditional Ghanaian... Are you homeschooling your children? Yes, I am. So I, I come from a very traditional Ghanaian upbringing where the adult speaks and you don't... You don't talk. Yeah, yeah. And even if you are asked a question and you answer the question, you are knocked for yeah. answering, answering the question. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, my husband is not from that type of an, an upbringing. Right. You know? And so I'm always trying to find balance. This, I, this must be a topic that we must touch on maybe once a week. 
-hmm. because I, 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 I bristle when he's having a, you know, he's maybe correcting a child and the child responds and he talk and the child responds. And in my mind, mm. I'm just hearing, this is not right. Yeah. This is not right. Yeah. But at the same time, we want to have the ability for our children to come to us. Themselves. And now I, I appreciate his input. And it's like we are at a 50-50. Because if our children are exposed to something negative, they can come and tell us, like he was saying. They can come and say, oh, I, I met with so-so and so. Maybe this is the topic they were speaking about. I didn't feel comfortable. Mm. Oh, this happened between me and whoever. Oh, I had... A fight. They, they, they are able to come in and speak to us. So I'm grateful for the balance that we are creating between ourselves, not to dampen the ability to communicate, but allowing them to realize that there is a respectful way to, of, of, with, yeah. of communication. Yeah. 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 I think as well, from the Western world that I came from and mm -hmm. then coming to Ghana, I've mm -hmm. seen it, the Western, the way they do things as parents trickling into Ghana. Okay. And the Western world, we're very corporate. We don't get so much time for the home. Well, from the UK, what I saw. Mm -hmm. That's the example I saw. But in Ghana, from the olden times we're talking about, mm -hmm. doctor's father was there. He was disciplining the house, yeah. putting everything in order. Everyone knew where you could sit, where you couldn't sit. It's, it's excellent morals to impart into children. Mm -hmm. But when the two parents are very busy and caught up with work, they have a bit more income. So I feel that a lot of the time, parents spoil their children, feeling that it's a way to compensate so yeah. for yeah. being missing yes. from the home. Right. But the way, because right. I, I hear from Ghanaian parents a lot that, oh, let them have fun, oh, let yeah. them enjoy. Because to them, they had a very strict life. Mm -hmm. And their parents were there, but they didn't get to enjoy. Yeah. But then that strict life has set you up to be very successful. Mm -hmm. Yes, very true. And to create a life that you are now enjoying. Right. But it's from the discipline and the shaping that you went through and the correcting. So now it's like we are exchanging standards. Yeah. Your children are not getting that same setup that you received. So now when they are given instruction, they'll think about it. Yeah. When they are told, this is where you sit and this is what you eat, like, oh, I can't eat that. That, that, you, you see it more. I mean, children having tantrums. It's yeah. not something so we used to see there's, in Ghana. There's a lady I sometimes, uh, an older woman I sometimes <coughs> buy from, and, um, well, she sells, she sells uh, fruits by the roadside. And um, she often tells me that, oh, as for my son, my son knows he's supposed to come and help me every morning to squeeze out um, the oranges if people want orange juice and all that. But I have to beg him first oh. before he comes. And even sometimes when I beg him and he decides to come, he will take money. <laughs> so as a mother, he's even pay, she's even paying her son wow. to come help her do the work that is taking care of you, the child. <laughs> I, I was made to sell ice water. I put water on my head mm. to the lorry station to sell. Not because my parents could not take care of me. I later realized that my father was instilling something in me. Mm. And, okay? I was selling oranges. I know how to peel it very fast. Pa, 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 pa. Mm. I was selling sugar cane. I was selling bread. I was selling meat pie. Right. Okay? Yeah. So that kind of upbringing instills responsibility yeah. in you, yes. boldness, mm. bravery, because you face people that. You never know. Mm -hmm. And now look at me. God has positioned me in the place where I can easily look at a business and I can tell you this business will not succeed. I can, you know, the training, the experience, this experience makes perfect. Yeah. I have that experience. And thanks to my mother and my father. And as I sit here, I want to salute my mother, my late mother, because all my children, she comes to help me take care of them so I can go back to school quickly and I can go back to work. Parenting now is not a one or couple job. You mm -hmm. need a third person for you to succeed. You cannot do it by yourselves. You can do it, but not to the extent that you should. You need a third person that you can trust. Yeah. Unfortunately for these uh, younger ones having children, 
we, their mothers, are also busy. Mm. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. If yeah. my daughter has a daughter, a child right now, I can spare maybe a few months. But that's about you it. You have to go back. Because yeah. I have a life. Mm -hmm. My husband needs me. Mm -hmm. My church needs me. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and so you need a third person. Yeah. So you have to save a bit for child care and take the child to a, a daycare or a nursery so that you can have time to do your work. Otherwise, you will be giving too many excuses to your employer and I will fire you. Mm -hmm. If you're working for me and you're using your child for excuses, wow. I'll fire you. No, 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 I'll fire you because the business must go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you must plan. It's all about planning. You know, the other day I was called on City FM for a discussion on the six month uh, Pro maternity uh, leave. The leave, yeah. And uh, three months. Why don't you think about the business, the employer? So if you want the woman to go and stay home for a long time <laughs> and still keep her job. Anyway, this is a different topic. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But you see, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a mother. Right. I have four children that came out of my body. Mm. And I know the pain. I had cesarean. I had natural. I know the pain. I'm very sensitive. At the same time, I'm a businesswoman. And no business must suffer because a woman is pregnant. No business must suffer because you have had a child. The business is there to support you and for you to support your family. So it's a negotiation. If you have a good boss who says, don't worry, I'll take a temp. The temp will be there. You can go and take care of your child and come back. That's fine. But when the temp comes, remember, the temp may like the job. She would do it in such a way that your boss will forget you. Yeah. But you know, Re Reverend Anaya, earlier you did mention that uh, it, it can't be the good parenting, cannot be just among two people. Yeah. You would need a third yeah. party involved in this. But in a situation where one of the parents is against an uh, external person or somebody from outside coming to take care of, help take care of their children, maybe one feels that no, we have to both try and be there for our kids, or one of us would have to sacrifice. Now what we, do you do then? Now they have men taking yeah, leave too. Should. So yeah. the man can also I, take a maternity leave or paternity <laughs> leave and take care of the child as well. Um, I, I think that when, when it comes in that way, um, you negotiate, yeah, you discuss it, you yeah. communicate. Um, that scripture that I gave it, Ephesians 5, mm. 1, it says, um, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Now, I thought that that instruction is exhaustive. Okay. But then, in the same verse, it continues and say, honor your father and your mother, mm. that, your days that your days will be long. Will be long. Yeah. And I always, I, I never really realized that the two definitions there, or the two sentences there were different. Mm. Someone could be a father and not a parent. Mm. True. Yeah. True. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, for parenting, children obey them in the Lord, in the sense that they are representing the Lord to you. Mm. As for fatherhood or motherhood, it's a biological function. Mm. If you have sex, it's likely you get pregnant. Right and you give birth to a human being. Right. But as to whether you would parent that child mm. is a deliberate, conscious decision you make mm -hmm. with that understanding that I have been trusted with a human being who is not only going to be mine, but is going to be everything to everybody yeah. in true. all of his lifetime. Very true. Your mom, I believe, as, in, as you know, I'm sure your mom adored you, my baby, my baby. Now, she doesn't have only you. Yes. You are yes. now a host of a program. You yes. are a friend to someone. You are a manager here. You are a wife to someone, whatever it is. Yeah. So that consciousness should, should always be there, that I have this responsibility. God has trusted me. Mm -hmm. And so where the two of you realize you don't have the time to be able to do it, it still does not take away the responsibility. Mm. Okay. You have to come to terms and understand that um, God is going to ask us how we trained this child. Mm -hmm. God is going to demand accountability mm. from us. Mm. 
if my job or my work is so demanding, I have to discuss with my spouse. Yeah. Like, right. like I mentioned, I mean, my family is not here. My work is here. So whenever my wife is stressed because she's taking care of the two kids and she's worried and she's complaining, I always tell myself, she's doing something I should be doing or she's playing a dual role. And so I have to be more patient. I have to be more encouraging. I have to uh, and be there for her in the sense that as it is anything my wife says she's asking for, I just make sure I provide for her because it's like... I find out Yes. I mean... I mean, I mean I find out that's a negotiation. Because if you are doing this, staying away, and exactly. she's still struggling financially. It's struggling. Then they, exactly. It's a no-brainer. Exactly. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. It will mean you are asking too much yeah, from, too much. from the person. Yeah. And so that's why I said you need to communicate. You need to negotiate. Mm -hmm. You need to recognize the effort the person is putting into it. You always have to tell her, I truly, truly appreciate mm. this extra Break effort. Love. No, to me, can't. Say, I truly love you. I love you the uh -huh. more. Say it more often. <laughs> uh -huh. I love oh, you the uh, more. Uh, uh, but I it is because we're not trained that way. We, we do lack words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lack <laughs> romantic words. Romantic it's not words. words. <laughs> romantic words. Romantic, romantic words. words. I, I, I do want to add that with, when it comes to having a third person, uh, we had Joella's mother. That's Mahi guy. She's uh, the head pastor of EICC. Yeah. And uh, we have to salute her because okay. she stood in the gap for Amen. us. Oh, yeah. so she's yeah. your mother? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. She okay. stood in the gap. And in my case, also my, my wife has her mother right. helping her. Right. And right. so I mean, every now and then, I tell people, I'm so blessed. Yeah. I tell mm. because I'm here. This conversation, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all in my head right now because <laughs> Even with the whole mother coming in to help take care yeah. of the children and all that, yeah. some partners end up feeling that it has to be for a number of months or weeks, and then afterwards, they have to go back. Yes. Because one way or the other, some parents end up becoming too comfortable. Yes. It mm. starts interfering yes. Absolutely. in they expressing themselves as parents, mm -hmm. and they expressing themselves as husband and wife as well. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. so, but I said, right, it doesn't... It doesn't reduce the importance or the, the necessity of having a third person. Exactly. And the mother is the most ideal. Some mothers are very busy. They will say, take a, a, a house help or nanny, I'll pay. I'll help you pay for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So in that yeah. way, in the same way, it's mother that is doing it, mm. but not she, she may come or she can say, bring my daughter can come and spend about a week here. Okay. Because you see, you have to learn how to bathe the child. Mm. Mm. If you hadn't done it before, you need to learn how to bathe a son and how to take off his pennies. Yeah. So it becomes yeah. a good one. Otherwise, <laughs> you bring up a child who, and then you, what <laughs> Bofrano? Yeah. Because you didn't know the female, you have to know how to clean mm. her, you know, her vagina for her. Yeah. You have to learn it. Right. And if you don't know how to do it and you don't ask, and your mother is not around, you bring up your daughter and she has a bad, stinking thing. Right. You know? So, so the, mothery, the, the motherly uh, appearance in the picture, it can be from the man, the man's mother, yeah. can be from the, the woman, depending on how the two of you feel yeah. mm. and the availability of your mother. Yeah. I mean, living in America for over 20 years, I see everyone who's pregnant trying so hard to bring their mother. Because if you don't have a mother to help you abroad, get ready to spend. There are some, yeah. yeah, there are some states, <laughs> some cities who provide free daycare for the community. A, a lot of cities have that. Mm. But if you don't know, and some people, when they don't have papers, they don't even want to know. So, How was it for you, personally? Oh, personally, like that's why I say, my mother comes, she came every time I was You're pregnant. Okay. I remember the first time she came, my husband was working because the day she was supposed to arrive, he took off, she couldn't come. So she came at a time that he was working. I had to order a limousine service to go and pick my mother from JFK. Mm -hmm. And this, okay. My, okay. my mom was sitting in a huge car <laughs> in the back and she wasn't sure if the car was for, for to pay her. care of her. <laughs> so when she arrived at the house, because I had just delivered, so I couldn't drive, 
And so, because she missed the flight, she was supposed to come before I deliver. But she okay. missed the flight, so she came after delivery. Okay. Okay. And so when the car came out there, I'm like, wow. <laughs> From Kofiase <laughs> all the way to JFK in a limousine. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that is a good memory that I have. Yeah. But every time I had a child, mm. mom would leave whatever she's doing in Ghana, mm. come there, stay there for about three, six months, and come down with the baby. So my two daughters actually went to uh, daycare and... Um, primary school. Pr no, yeah, primary school. In Ghana. In Ghana. Okay. The first two years. First two years, yeah. They came here in Ghana. And, uh, but my son, I brought him here and left him for a while. Okay. Because I had to go to school and I had to work. And my husband too was working. So if we don't do that, it means we have to have a nanny come into the home or take them to... So the most convenient was either bringing mommy up there or bringing the children down here. That is how he's been working for most of the uh, African uh, diasporans it abroad. Right, right. So, but if you are in Ghana and you have a good uh, mother or mother-in-law who is also available, yeah. Yeah. some mother-in-laws don't agree with you yeah. at all. Yeah. So yeah. that one, don't mm. even think about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And even some mothers don't like their in-laws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so their daughter's sons. So living in the same home will be difficult. And also the space. Maybe you don't have enough space in your home. Right. So if the woman can trust, the word is trust. If the woman can trust her husband, she can leave the husband and go and spend time with her mother. So the mother can help her to take care of okay. the baby. Uh, but if you cannot trust your husband, don't, don't go. go anywhere. <laughs> Don't go. Stay close. Because what you will cry. What you will cry. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, don't yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Why are you? Okay. Yeah, you'll be pushing you. Go, go, go. Don't go. Okay. So unfortunately, we have to be, you know, uh, going. But then I'll take your final submissions on the oh, topic. And then, me. yeah. Yes, man. So just just some few seconds. Oh, Ever, well, Jerry? I think so much has been said. Yeah. Um, parenting is a great privilege. It's a high responsibility. It's also very rewarding. Yeah. You see how a tender, feeble child changes and grows and grows and grows and he becomes, becomes, becomes like, you becomes know? a fine <laughs> pastor, <laughs> you know, becomes, becomes a blessing yeah. and becomes yeah. a gift not only to yourself, but to, to, others. to others, to yeah. society and to the world. And I think that we need to attach all seriousness to it. Okay. And as I was coming today, uh, one of the things that really struck me was that we should always remember that God was the first parent. Um, in Genesis 2.22, he says, and a man shall leave his father and mother. And, but at that time, there was no father, Adam and Eve. God stood in as a father. He stood in as a mother. And he raised the first man and the first woman and he has the greatest experience and so with parenting always go back to God True. always pray every True. child is different All right. ask him for wisdom ask him to show you how to take care of what he has trust and trusted you with mm. and he will give you the wisdom he would always right. show you what to do and how to do it okay. that's what I'll say Lady Makan um, I think finally what I will say is that communication is key mm. with everything, okay. with whatever your career choices will be, with how you are raising the children. If a time comes where one has to be home, one has to be out, communication is key. Mm. And I will encourage parents to really pray about the direction that if you are a Christian, you want God's okay. hand and you want his direction in how you are raising okay. your children. All right. And even with that, you want to communicate with each other and say, this is the vision that God has shown me. Pray as my spouse mm. and see if you are also comfortable with this vision. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to go. We have to go, fortunately. But um, thank you so much, uh, Reverend Anaya, uh, Pastor McCann, Lady McCann, and Pastor Jerry. Thank you so much for your time. Well, this is where we are. We have to end today's edition of Prime Morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Time was fast, but...